Welcome back and Happy New Year. Today I'm presenting part two, how pressure systems control climate, focusing on the shifts in the intertropical convergence zone, or ITCZ, and why warmer temperatures attract more rain, and thus why the ITCZ determines the location of both rainforests and deserts. Now, mainstream media's narrative suggests that global warming increases evaporation and thus makes worse droughts. But science flips that warming narrative on its head. As you will see conclusively, it's drought that causes higher temperatures. And it is the reduced transport of moisture from the oceans to the land that causes drought. You will see that during the coldest periods of the last 10,000 years, societies experienced the worst droughts. And contrary to media narratives, the science shows warmer temperatures will bring more rain. The ITCZ is easily recognized from satellite imagery showing a belt of clouds encircling the Earth. It moves northward and southward with the seasonal position of the sun and determines what tropical regions experience a wet season and what experience a dry season. In the northern hemisphere, as summertime warmth moves north, the ITCZ, seen in red, brings the rainy season to the northern tropics. While south of the equator, cooler temperatures experience seasonal drought. In the southern hemisphere's summer, the ITCZ then moves southward as seen in orange, while regions north of the equator experience seasonal drought. So on average, the ITCZ migrates between 9 degrees north and 2 degrees north over the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, but it migrates much further north and south over Asia and Africa because land masses heat up much faster than the ocean. Thus, over the lands bordering the Indian Ocean, the ITCZ brings rainfall further poleward, on average migrating between 20 degrees north and 8 degrees south. And published science shows that during cooler periods, such as the Little Ice Age, the great width of the tropical rain bands contracts, reducing the extent of monsoonal rains. The Little Ice Age was the Earth's coldest period in over 10,000 years, yet despite global warming theory, it created some of the worst droughts, droughts that caused the collapse of many societies, such as the Ming Dynasty in China and the Khmer Empire in Cambodia. The ITCZ represents the dynamical region that drives energy and momentum from the sun and pushes it from the equator towards the poles and drives the Hadley atmospheric circulation. The ITCZ is the region of intense convection where moist air rises, then cools, and precipitates heavy rainfall to the regions below, thus enabling the world's tropical rainforest. The remaining dry air then diverges towards the poles, where it sinks, and between 20 and 40 degrees poleward of the equator, it generates regions of dry, high-pressure systems that mark the edge of the Hadley circulation. Now, this global map of precipitation illustrates the location of heavy rainfall from convergence zones, seen in reds and dark blue, around the equator, in the regions of dry high-pressure systems, symmetrically located north and south of the equator, shown in yellow. A map of the Earth's Great Deserts regions shows the correlation between deserts and the Hadley pressure system. I've overlaid the pressure systems to see more clearly how the high pressure systems border the western edge of the USA's western deserts and South America's Atacama Desert. They border to the west of the Sahara in northern Africa and the Kalahari Desert in southern Africa. And the high pressure system borders to the west of Australia's desert. High pressure systems create warmer temperatures in several ways. The dry descending air in a high pressure system produces clear skies. Without clouds or mist to block out sunlight, surfaces are heated more strongly by solar radiation. 
Water vapor is a greenhouse gas, so without clouds and reduced water vapor, more infrared heat escapes directly to space, so clear skies are also reducing the greenhouse effect. Nonetheless, increased solar heating has a greater warming impact and offsets any decreased in greenhouse effects. Now, even if there was no increase in solar or greenhouse radiation, an increase in dryness amplifies temperatures. Known as specific heat, scientists determine that different substances require different amounts of energy to increase that substance's temperature. To raise one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius requires 4,200 joules, and joules is just a measure of energy. To raise one kilogram of sand one degree requires much less energy, just 830 joules. Thus, by removing a kilogram of water from the land surface, the energy that would have raised water by one degree will instead raise the sand by five degrees. In addition, over two million joules of energy are required to evaporate a kilogram of water without raising the temperature. These dynamics are just one reason why average temperature can be unreliable science. An average temperature does not reflect changes in radiation from added carbon dioxide unless any temperature effects induced by dryness are first accounted for, and that hasn't been happening. Now, high-pressure systems further generate regions of dryness by blocking the western flow of moist winds from the ocean to the land. High-pressure systems cause the winds in the northern hemisphere to circulate in a clockwise manner, thus deflecting moist winds from the west northwards. For example, the Pacific High Pressure System strengthens each summer because descending winds more readily descend over a cooler ocean in rel that's relative to the warmer land. By deflecting the moisture northward, the strengthened summer high causes California to be dry from June through October, while simultaneously bring in summer rains to drench the coast from Oregon to Alaska. Because this dryness amplifies temperatures, Death Valley in southeastern California still holds the record for the hottest observed air temperature, reaching 134 degrees Fahrenheit on July 10, 1913, long before any significant rise in carbon dioxide. The world's Mediterranean climates, shown here in red, are symmetrically located around the equator, centered between 30 and 40 degrees north and south of the equator. All Mediterranean climates are characterized by hot, dry summers and cool, wet winters, the opposite of the tropical seasons. This is because as the ITCZ moves northward each summer, so do the high-pressure systems of the Hadley circulation. Cooler ocean surfaces relative to warmer land intensifies the highs, which then block the flow of moisture from the oceans to the land. This is why the naturally dry summers in California, in Greece, in all Mediterranean climates are highly susceptible to wildfire. As the ITC moves southward during the winter, so do the high pressure systems, and as the highs weaken, it now allows ocean moisture to bring winter rains to the land. What might seem peculiar is that the Mediterranean climates are restricted to a relatively narrow band along the coast. The reason Mediterranean climates don't expand further inland is because the warmer land temperature of the summer create a low pressure system that draws in monsoonal rains from elsewhere. The North American monsoons draw moisture from the Gulf of California and the Gulf of Mexico. And as seen by the weather data from Albuquerque, New Mexico, the greatest precipitation is brought inland during the hottest months of July through September. Like the ITC transport of rains, summer monsoons illustrate how higher temperatures bring more moisture, not drought. So up next will be part three, how the sun controls the ITCZ. And until then, 
embraced renowned scientist Thomas Huxley's advice that skepticism is the highest of duties and blind faith the one unpardonable sin. And if you are appreciating the science clearly presented here, science rarely presented by mainstream media, then please give it a like, share it, or copy the URL and send it to friends via email. Subscribe to my channel so you can see all parts of this uh, educational series. Or read my book, Landscapes and Cycles, An Environmentalist Journey to Climate Skepticism. Thank you.